thank you very much for uh, inviting me here. It's really a fun to be here and get out of the uh, sun for a little bit. Um, so my name is Nathan Clark, and I founded an urban beekeeping company called Mad Urban Bees. My background is actually in publishing. I was a project manager for a publishing company, and uh, a lot of uh, you know graphic design, advertising, newspaper, and so. Why did I start, decide to put on bee suits, full head to toe bee suits, because uh, I'm allergic to bees and that's another story, um, <laughs> and go out in 80 to 90 degree weather and spend four to six hours checking on beehives? Interesting enough, it wasn't initially about the bees. Initially it was about the honey. Um, my wife's, uh, ex-wife's um, uncle said, you have a backyard, you should have bees. And Really what got me into beekeeping was mead. Uh, if you're not familiar with mead, it's honey wine. And uh, I really wanted, very curious, starting kind of a little urban homesteading at the time, uh, starting to raise a family, and wanted to know what honey from my own backyard would taste like in drinkable form, you know, in alcohol. And it was, a, it was kind of a, a fun journey and you know, made some discoveries along the way, but eventually hit a point where um, I decided to become a stay-at-home dad. And, um, you know, one of those things that happens when you're proficient in your job is a lot of times no good deed goes unpunished. So I had knew what I was, uh, for in, in, as a project manager, I knew what would happen if I went back into the same realm. And I was looking for something different. And so on a, uh, sitting outside uh, talking with uh, Colleen Boss, who actually now has opened up a mead uh, a winery right here in town. You can find it, I think it's uh, 8, 829 East Wash. So um, it's a great place to, to, to have a little bit of mead. Uh, she's also got a real big heavy metal theme. So if you, if you like uh, heavy metal, it, it's, all, it's, uh, it's quite fun. Um, but so having this conversation with her and went, well, you know, um, she was trying to do local mead and, uh, and I think of local honey. And by the end of the conversation, um, I think the next day, Started, started Mad Urban Bees. And it's interesting because it's like, okay, go online. Who else is doing um, things like I'm doing or I want to do? Crickets. I, mean, I realized that I had plowed right out into the middle of the field and had very little idea of what the heck I was doing. Um, so it's very much started this, um, this business um, from, uh, from the ground up. So. Uh, sold honey from my own backyard, which is a thing you can actually do in Wisconsin, um, and then started getting interest uh, from the community. And one of the things that, as a for Mad Urban Bees, that my model is a little different than a lot of beekeepers. I don't have one place that has a lot of bees. I have a lot of places that have a few bees. Actually, all my bees are hosted by individuals and families right here in Madison in backyards and on rooftops. So it's a very community-based organization. And when I first started out, I had no idea who would be interested in it. So I just sold the honey in and uh, let people uh, try it. And what I found is that um, there were people who wanted bees in their backyard because there were no other local pollinators. They were going out there and pollinating squash and cucumbers by hand. So I went into this, you know, thinking, oh, you know, honey to make mead. And suddenly I'm in urban agriculture. And actually, according to the federal government, I'm now a farmer. I thought it was artisanal food producer, but I'm actually a farmer. Um, and with that, uh, realizing that uh, the community aspect was something that was gonna be really critical to my business, I started then a Kickstarter and got even more interest in doing that, uh, in, in uh, people hosting, hosting my hives. And actually, as of uh, this last year, I had 10 spots open and I had over 60 applicants from one email. So it's, um, it's been interesting of having that kind of growth. But what's interesting is, you know, with, with something that's community-minded. I mean, in many ways, you know, my business is part of the community, I mean, literally in, in people's backyards, but it also, you know, I'm pollinating, you know, people's gardens, and, um, and they also get to do, uh, they also get some really great tasting honey out of it. Another thing that I do differently uh, that you're familiar with probably with a lot of organic, uh, small organic farms, is I do a CSA. A lot of things that people don't know about honey is honey actually changes flavor from spring to fall. There's actually quite a bit of different flavors, and I've gotten some weird ones. Um, uh, mint, cinnamon, still don't know where that one comes from. Uh, bitter orange, uh, very floral, very herbal, butterscotch, uh, caramel, uh, and, it's just, and it's all based on what, um, 
what flowers are blooming at the time. So my CSA is you get to try all those different flavors throughout the year. And uh, this year I have about 130 members of it. And so for, because it is a seasonal, uh, uh, beekeeping is very seasonal, you know, we have roughly June through September is the months that uh, bees produce honey and enough of it that uh, we can take it. Otherwise the rest of it is getting them ready for winter, getting them ready for spring, and February and January are pr pretty much um, uh, paperwork at that point in time. A lot of uh, stuff. I also teach a lot of classes at that time. Um, so yeah, um, so creating this kind of model of trying to do uh, sustainable beekeeping, um, you know, I kind of hit it, started, beekeep started this business at a time where, uh, you know, movies like uh, Vanishing of the Bees, uh, Queen of the Sun had just come out. And so uh, very much on the public mind. And, you know, with the, especially with the current administration, uh, you know, trying to do more for pollinators. And I actually had the uh, ability uh, and the opportunity to participate in Madison's uh, Pollinator Protection Task Force this year or last year that actually is uh, now going to be a, a document guiding how the city uh, manages and mows uh, a lot of its a lot of its property around town. So one of the interesting things is you know going from you know a place where I was sitting in front of the computer in, in an air condition into going out and um, figuring out how to do woodworking and, and figuring out how to uh, the best way to walk into someone else's backyard in the middle of a day. Um, and part of that is, is wearing the bee suit. So a lot of these things of, you know, being self-employed is a lot of work, but it's rarely ever boring. It can be tedious, definitely. Um, I think I hand bottled around 7,000 jars of honey last year. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things of finding things that will definitely keep you interesting. And I've kind of fallen into this, um, this uh, kind of, eco-activism as well with it, uh, with the beekeeping and trying to be more sustainable and um, making, uh, trying, to give pe trying to give people an awareness of where their food comes from and things like that. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been an interesting ride so far um, with some of it. Another aspect of, you know, is, you know, how do you engage with people? Because, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, for, for the traditional beekeepers, it's, you know, farmers markets. Well, I've, I am a, you know, for the most part until this year, I now have uh, two part-time employees, but for the most part, it was just me. So the going to a farmer's market when I already ha also have two small children, uh, wasn't going to work. So how, how, how do you communicate with it? So, um, Facebook, uh, Facebook and then having, you know, Twitter and uh, Instagram have been really great ways of being like, Hey, you know, and so, you know, showing pictures of hives, showing pictures of stuff. Uh, so the technology aspect, um, and especially with uh, websites like mine, you know, having um, uh, resources like uh, Squarespace or many of the other kind of plug and play web browsers has been um, uh, very valuable for that. But it's interesting when, you know, when, when things do come up, um, you know, and another aspect of beekeeping is there's a lot of information out there. And a lot of it is, uh, interesting, especially uh, and very uh, political and very opinionated. Um, one of the first conversations I remember having someone with, with about Monsanto was they were convinced that Monsanto was trying to get an army of robot bees to take over the world. And that's just, um, and you see that article about every two, three years it hits the internet and that, that Monsanto wants to destroy the bees so they can release their army of robot bees. And so, and so one of the things, especially with, uh, you know, a lot of the, um, trying to ban uh, neonicotinoids, which is a type of pesticide, trying to you know, do different things to, to bolster uh, the bee population. It's, it's one of those things of, I like being passionate about bees, but I also like being accurate. Uh, my mother is a science teacher, my brother's, uh, my brother's a chemist, so I've kind of got the uh, very uh, large influence of the sciences in, in my background. So looking with, uh, you know, um, passionate what I'm doing, but also looking at it through a lens of, you know, analytics of, you know, what's the best way to do things. And so a lot of things what I'm doing with my business now are the broad strokes have been um, uh, put out, I, uh, placed. I recently moved from my basement. I like to say my business has grown up and moved out of the basement and now has its own commercial space. And so it's, it's just kind of an interesting wake up. Oh, well, <laughs> no worries. Um, so it's, it's one of those things of with, um, 
you know, with urban agriculture. Urban agriculture right now is a very much a growing um, aspect of agriculture in this country, especially with uh, innovation. Uh, cities like Chicago, uh, Detroit especially, you hear a lot about urban ag in Detroit and what they're trying to do to, to take back um, areas or, or transform areas. Uh, Madison probably is, is continuing to add um, more and more uh, community gardens, and I think there's more of an interest in, in that. So with that in mind, I think that you know, the, w with the organic food movement, I mean, uh, Blue Mounds area has probably the largest proportion of farmers earning a living wage doing organic farming in the world. So uh, Madison especially and Dane County are kind of poised at this, um, not really revolutionizing agriculture, but more of uh, refining of agriculture and especially the kind of environment they're doing. And urban beekeeping is definitely gonna be part of that. So if you get a chance, um, support your local beekeeper uh, and um, save the bees. So. <laughs> So if you'd like any questions about bees, honey, urban beekeeping, yes? Two questions. Mm -hmm. Are there, how do you handle liability? Mm -hmm. And how do we bring them to other cities? And that, those are two really good questions. Uh, liability, the first thing I ever did for a business was pay a lawyer to come up with a contract going, I want to put bees in other people's yards. <laughs> I broke three insurance companies trying to find, uh, just trying to get a company that, to then provide me with liability insurance. For it, so uh, legal contract and just uh, mostly a general liability at this point in time. Because Madison does allow for beekeeping, more specifically the, the county and state allow for beekeeping, um, it kind of gets written into a lot of homeowner stuff. Now, one of the things with uh, what I'm trying to do with Matter Urban Bees is get a model that is potentially reproducible. But that's more like the, for me, that's more in the, the three to five year goal is trying to come up with a, a model that can be like, hey, St. Louis, you know, you, you know, in the right circumstances, here's how you do it, here's how you set up a CSA and all, and all of that, here's how you find hosts and what you need. How do you stay safe from, you said you're allergic. Yeah, so first off, I got allergy shots. So uh, it's called venom immunotherapy, roughly allergy shots for bee stings. And I reacted very well to them. So I actually started the business I think four years after I found out I was allergic. Um, and at that point in time, um, so uh, I do have EpiPens um, and mostly I wear a bee suit all the time. So I'm head to toe. And especially when you're walking into other people's backyards in the middle of the day, you look like you're supposed to be there. You know, it's, people have asked me, you know, uh, hazmat suit, uh, am I the exterminator? Uh, a, <laughs> With last year with the Ebola in Africa, I was, are you wearing an Ebola suit? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's having good humor, but also it's the, you know, just kind of more of the, you know, wearing, wearing the full suit also gives a, a, a kind of a, I'm supposed to be here and I'm being safe. No, because uh, you wouldn't want to, I, I was actually out uh, working on uh, raising some queen bees actually right before this, and so it, you wouldn't want the suit anywhere in here. It's very sweaty. Mm -hmm. Yes? So do you deploy uh, whole hives to individual mm -hmm. So two hives, uh, two, two hives per location, so yeah. So I pretty much I require about four by six foot area, um, and then also if it's in the Madison area or Middleton to follow the various ordinances that are in place for that. And so I've actually changed the, it over to that. I'm actually now treating myself as more like a gardening service. So uh, people can uh, then, uh, people that pretty much hire me rather than me looking for people to, to place hives, it's people actually need to come to me in order to, to place hives. Yes. Yep. I, I produce what's called raw honey, meaning that it isn't uh, treated or isn't uh, nothing's mixed in with it, and it hasn't been heat treated at all. So it goes from the beehive to uh, to the extractor to a bucket to the jar. So it's as pretty much as uh, natural as you can get it. Yes. Uh, how does the bee survive winter? Um, so uh, I I have decided to start treating for mites, which are a, a parasite. Um, the uh, which is pro one of the largest uh, issues next to colony collapse for honeybees. Um, I wrap them in tar paper, give them uh, um, uh, stuff, uh, present some food for the winter, and just pretty much hope for the best. My, moving bees around is one of the issues that causes colony collapse. So, but thank you very much. So he's, he's saying I'm done. Yeah.